Hi, I'm Todd Hanley, Director of Marketing and Communications at MIHS, and today I'm sitting down with Jean Caballo, Senior Vice President of Behavioral Health, on this edition of The Pulse. Today, we'll be talking about the stigma around behavioral health and what we're doing as a system to remedy those misconceptions. Jean, thank you for joining me here today. Um, there's a lot of perceptions, whether they be right, wrong, or somewhere in between, about um, behavioral health and, and people who are experiencing symptoms of, of mental illness. Um, tell me a little bit about what people think and what is reality. Well, I think a lot of people think that mental illness is something that results from something that they've done wrong or that they can fix on their own and it's something to be ashamed of. In reality, it's none of those. It's something that is part of the brain functioning that certain people have. But in reality, it's nothing that they've done or their parents have done to cause that. And so it's nothing to be ashamed of. But it's that fear of being ridiculed. It's that fear of being made fun of that keeps people from coming forward and seeking help because they're concerned about what other people are going to think. I think, at least in my perception, I think uh, a lot of people expect that behavioral health patients are dangerous. Is that, is that true? People think that. In reality, it's not true. Yeah. In fact, people with serious mental illness are much more likely to be victims of crime than to perpetrate crimes on their own. So th they're much more likely to be taken advantage of. Okay. Than, than someone who doesn't have a mental illness. But mental illness doesn't make somebody more violent. Okay. Well, you know, one of the sad statistics is that it's an average of eight to 10 years from the first onset of symptoms before people get help for wow. mental illness-related issues. We would never accept that with something like diabetes or high blood pressure or cancer, you know. But with behavioral health, mental illness, we, we've tolerated this long length of time and unfortunately when people wait to get help the illness progresses, the symptoms get worse and the outcome is much less uh, positive. So helping to reduce stigma not only makes living with the mental illness easier but it makes treating it and preventing the, the bad outcomes much more uh, positive. Right. And so one of the things that makes treating behavioral health issues so challenging is that there's this idea that you should be able to just get over it, you know, and you shouldn't have to rely on medications for the rest of your life. You shouldn't have to continue to see a counselor. You should just be able to get over it. And that, unfortunately, prevents people from getting control over the, the issue on a long-term basis. Okay. So what are we doing as an organization to help address this stigma and or educate you know, the general population to maybe change their perceptions or, or reevaluate or readjust right. what, how they think about it? Well, all across our, our organization, from the emergency room to when someone's admitted to the hospital to when they come to any of our clinics, we're asking everybody questions about depression and trying to get an idea of who might be experiencing depression and not getting treatment for it. In the example of one of our clinics, if the primary doctor asks the person, are you having depression, and they admit to having some symptoms of depression, currently what happens in our system and pretty much across the rest of the country is a referral is given to go see a mental health professional. Yeah. And the research has shown that more than half the people never go. Okay. And so they don't get the treatment and the depression doesn't go away and it gets worse and the only time they actually get the treatment is when something really serious happens like they can no longer go to work or they can't get out of bed or they're thinking about killing themselves. So if we can get to the point where we're actually providing the behavioral health services in the clinic instead of saying here's a referral go call them and because I'm ashamed I'm not going to do it. I have a counselor right here that's part of our team let me bring them into the office and let's talk together and let's see if we can't get you some help and 
the studies of systems that are doing that now, integrating behavioral health into primary care, you have a much more, uh, uh, what's the right way to say it, a, a much more receptive approach from that person. They get the treatment, they don't feel the stigma of having to go to a behavioral health right. treatment center and, and they get the help that they need. So treating behavioral health in the primary care setting is certainly one way to address the stigma. Well, what can I do to change my perception and my, how I've stigmatized uh, behavioral health? Well, I think we all have some of that uh, that we have to challenge within ourselves. And, and we really have to look at how we think about people that are experiencing mental illness and not feel sorry for them and not feel ashamed of them, but really see it as something that they need to get help for. And we can challenge it in our conversations. You know, so many of the stereotypical terms that we use for people that are crazy or people that are insane, if we can stop using those terms and challenge friends and coworkers and family members to not talk about people like that, I think that goes a long way in starting to begin to change our attitude. So it's as much about changing our behaviors as it is our perceptions. Of course, yes. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.